Hi, good evening, and thank you for joining us on another segment of New England Veterans Liberty House Veterans Corner. Uh, before we go into our show, I'd like to take, take a moment and pause for those that have uh, transitioned over uh, this past weekend. It was uh, uh, Mr. Lucian Legendra. Um, he was one of our clients um, for, for about a couple of years, and he recently passed on Friday. Um, also, we have uh, a veteran, also Maggie Rivas, and her son uh, just transitioned over on Friday as well. So I would just want to take a couple of seconds, please, and just pay our respects. Thank you for allowing me that opportunity. Uh, we have a great guest uh, with us today and a longtime friend. Uh, I have a lot of respect and admiration for this young man. Um, and I'm sure he's going to love it because I'm calling him young man. Nonetheless, uh, we've been friends for a little bit here. And uh, Jerry McGuire, thank you for joining us and allowing us to be blessed with your presence hey, today, my friend. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. Jerry is, uh, I like to say, a jack of all trades and a master of all. Um, he does a little bit of everything, but I'm going to get a little, uh, before we go and talk about the actual Mr. Jerry Maguire. And yes, it is Jerry Maguire. Um, so those that are probably write to us and say, well, it wasn't Jerry Maguire. It is Jerry Maguire. Like, you had me at hello, Jerry Maguire. And he <laughs> loves that. Anyway, Mr. Jerry Maguire actually entered the United States Army, and I'm okay to say this, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> on the advice of a judge in Malden District Court. He must have been um, up to no good. Uh, in September of 1972, if I'm not mistaken, correct? That's correct. He became a truck driver, which is the, uh, uh, the MOS uh, 64 Charlie, I guess, at that time, which has been changed now to 88, 88 Mike. Mike. Uh, he served with uh, the Headquarters, Headquarters Command, 1st Squadron, 3rd Armored Cavalry, Brave Rifles. Was that like their Yeah, motto Brave Rifles was our motto. Okay. Um, when we would hand, render a hand salute, the enlisted would say Brave Rifles. Brave Rifles. The officers would respond with Aia, the battle cry of the cavalry. Okay. Fair enough. You learn something new every day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he was just a kid from Boston who had never held a firearm before in the Army. However, he scored expert every single time he fired that weapon. Um, it happened to me when I went into the Marine Corps. And my instructors, um, after asking me, oh, man, you must have shot a lot. I said, no, sir. I've never. I said, but it was just, I guess, it, we were natural at it. Once you put that rifle butt in your pocket and you know you're comfortable with it, um, the rest was pretty easy for us, I guess, at the time. Yeah. But good for you. Expert every time. As a driver, he once directed, participated in the CAF annual truck rodeo. All right, you need to tell me a little bit about that before I go any further. All right. Well, the CAV has a truck rodeo every year where NCOs get to operate the vehicles and the, the junior enlisted get to wash them. I was an E3 at the time, so I got to wash the truck, okay, you know, enough. kick all the tires. Yeah. And the, uh, the, his name was Sergeant Olson, was supposed to drive that truck. Okay. He got T-boned on the way into the rodeo and uh, broke his leg. Oh. The CO tells me just jump in the, jump the truck. It. Do what you can do. I placed first across the squadron. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you were in the right place at the right time. Yeah, I can. Right. I so can this is this is this is a a rodeo of vehicles. Yeah, nowadays? trucks. Like Humvees and five tons. And well, Humvee wasn't and even tons. thought well, of Humvee, then. Yeah, touche, touche. I'll take that back. Uh, I guess maybe the Deuce. Yeah, the deuces? five and a half. The five and a half. Yeah, the tractor okay. with the trailer. Okay. All right. Good to go. His job was, like he's mentioned, was to wash the truck and keep up it in a state of readiness for that sergeant who was going to drive it that day. Unfortunately, as you already heard it, um, he was able to actually do a little bit more than just wash the vehicles, but he took over command. Um, his company commander made him drive, I guess, as you just started, and he won first prize in every competition across the squadron. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, he was promoted to E4 because of that? Yeah, the next, the, the following week. Get out of here. Yep. He was promoted to E4, which was specialist or corporal? Specialist. Specialist, and was offered to be transferred to Fort Carson as the post commander's driver, which probably would have got you a couple more stripes even faster. But Yes, he, and it did. It did. 
<laughs> exactly. So off he went to Fort uh, Carson, Col Colorado. I uh, went to serve a year in Colorado. Was again offered to be transferred to Berlin, Germany. Berlin Brigade. Okay. Uh, there he was assigned to DCSI. Please tell us what DCSI is. DC, uh, Deputy. Sh Deputy Chief Staff of Intelligence. Roger. And for three years, drove and protected VIPs such as General Haig, General Blanchard, and many others. So, yeah, you were at the right place at the right time. So I we'll, was. Man. The wall was up. Okay, thanks, man. The wall was guarded. We looked down the barrel of an AK-47 every day. Every single day. Went through Checkpoint Charlie almost every day. Went to Spandau Prison. Met that was that? That was Spandau Prison is where the uh, Nazi war crimes. Uh -huh. uh, well, yeah, because you had higher echelons and but stuff. But there was on only the one prisoner, Rudolf Hess. Hmm. Hmm. I got in trouble for giving him a cigarette, by the way. Did you? I did. Why'd you give him a cigarette? He asked me for one. Touche. That's yeah. just the type of man he is. That's just Jerry. You go and ask for help, but he's going to help you. Uh, no if ands, or buts about it. And I think that's why you and I click so well. Um, we like to do things that that don't normally need to have all kinds of bureaucracy and red tape in the way. You know, let's just get it done. You know. Returning to the United States, he was stationed in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Uh, it was during a training mission uh, of his helicopter caught on fire. Mm -hmm. Lost power went down. Whoa. Eight men died that day. And you okay with me? Um, yeah, yeah, put it okay. down. I'm good with it Eight now. Eight men died that day. I got, uh, got pretty banged up. Uh, and today have more. Uh, <laughs> today he has more metal in him uh, than a pickup truck, than his pickup truck. And after 10 years of service, he could no longer serve again. However, I, I, I you know, I keep, I could always, I always hear that with a lot of uh, uh, other veterans leave the. Um, leave duty um, when they say, okay, you know, we have injuries that can no longer allow me to carry out my scope of work. Right. And so we'll leave and, and, and go on and do other stuff. In your case, though, Jerry, this is not true. I could no longer serve. And the reason why I'm going to elaborate a little bit on that. Because, Jerry, um, I believe upon you leaving the military, um, I'm sure that you continue serving your community in one way or another. Um, well, when I first got out, I, w I was really brokenhearted. Uh, I had lived. And it took me a long time to, to get okay to with this. With yeah. You know, uh, I'm 61 years old, so. Yeah. Are I, you really? I, yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you think, I'm kidding? No, I, I, was, 61? I was just about to tell you that you need to just extract your DNA and sell it, because I think you have the fountain for youth, my friend. Oh, cool. Um, That'll get me dinner at least this weekend. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, when I got out, I was I was brokenhearted. Um, I had lost. It was because of the, the uh, eight men. The eight men. Um, there were three of us who survived, and within 60 days, one of the three committed suicide. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry to hear that. And it, it you know the the whole thing um, would visit me over and over and over again for a long time. Um, I got into a little bit of social trouble, I would say, not legal trouble. So. Um, although there was a, a tad bit of legal trouble. Yeah. Did you have a lot of battles with Jack Daniels? Um, I, I did. Um, in fact, my I, I didn't care for Jack as much as I did Jameson. <laughs> okay. um, Jack was my uh, and uh, you know today I uh, I am 18 years sober. Last October, 19 this this year. Congratulations, um, my brother. And in those 18 and a half years, yeah. I have never once been arrested. Nice. Well, hey, prior to that, volumes, big volumes, Jerry. Prior to that, I uh, I had uh, nine assault and batteries against me. Okay. Um, fortunately, um, I was never convicted of any. Um, you were touched by any? I, I was able to, uh, you know, explain that almost every one of them is because somebody grabbed me from behind and I reacted to that. Correct. And um, a lot of our veterans just to, to and add. Which is why we I, react. you know. We I, react to somebody's actions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is why, I, one of the reasons, I guess, that uh, I'm so passionate about helping my brothers and sisters. Um, why is that, though? Why is that specifically that you're so passionate about? Oh, well, brothers and I have gone to court several times with, uh, with so far, all men um, who have gotten in trouble with the law, and I, I get an opportunity to talk to the judge and explain you can relate. The, the programs that are available through okay. the VA, mm -hmm. um, especially in Bedford. Yeah, and it, we'll get that in the next segment, so I don't want you to get too far ahead okay. of yourself because we're going to get to that next all right. segment. So um, I want to know a little bit more about Jerry the guy. All right, so um, I 
Couldn't maintain a job when I first got out. Um, I couldn't. Uh, was it the uh, uh, obviously the PTSD was playing a big pivotal part? Yeah, of it. a lot of it was depression. I, yep. You know, I would wake up one morning and go like, I'm not having fun at this, so I'm not going to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was no purpose. There was yeah. no meaning behind. You know, uh, I, I drove a truck for a company called Atlas Betting out of Chelsea. Don't know why. And those people are great people. Yeah. Let me tell you. To work with. Uh, they they. Uh, they knew something was off with me. They they knew that I was a veteran, and they cared for the veteran, and they they kind of covered up the you know the little bit that was off. Um, but uh, they they were very good to me at Atlas Betting. Um, so I drove a truck for them, and you know one day I, I said, to them, "I'm not having fun here anymore. I I don't want to stay." And yeah. took my check, and I walked off the job. Um, I actually bought my own truck, for, and I drove for a company called Dart. I, what do you mean, like an 18? Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, I bought the tractor and then I pulled the yeah, trailer. Yeah, pulled the trailers, yeah. Um, so a subcontractor? Uh, yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, I had fun at that, you know, driving across country, you know, seeing yeah. this, seeing that. And not always in, in, in one location for right. a very long time. Anymore. And then, so. you know, the, the familiarity mm -hmm. set in and I'd go like, well, they don't really need this load on Tuesday. Maybe I'll go sightseeing. So I'd show up a day or two late with the load, and of course, you know, that ended up getting me in trouble. That didn't go too well. So uh, that didn't last. So I, I had a long, long, hard time. Uh, when I started keeping my job was when I started to work for Bedford VA. Okay. Um, what did you do at Bedford VA, by the way? Well, first I started off with CWT. Oh, yeah, the construction... Um, uh, yeah, that was VCT, the Veterans Construction Team. I yeah, started yeah. off with CWT and uh, immediately was, was moved over to VCT because of the, the trade skills that I had. Um, I, was, I, I could install carpet. Um, I, oh, so you were actual, you, you actually hands-on trades guy for yeah. them? Is that what it was? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, because okay. Yeah. they... they I thought they just uh, sub out work or something to Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, they have a whole crew of... Yep. Uh, of veterans who, for one reason or another, can no longer be a licensed electrician or a licensed carpenter, mm -hmm. and they work VCT, very skilled men. Under the Be Bedford umbrella? Under the, the, you're right, under the, yeah, uh, the VA tutelage of, of Bedford VA, absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, David. Uh, well, I got a couple of names too. Uh, um, there's a, I think you sent uh, one of our friends, Marvin Pena. Oh, he's great. To, uh, he, uh, that that course on Wednesday, last great. Wednesday, he went there. I was supposed to go with him. That's Jerry Pensky. I don't, I don't recall the name, but I yeah, know he yeah, went. No, he went because I sent him to. Yeah, and he got yeah. a bunch of uh, tools. I don't know if he showed yeah, you all the yeah, tools and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah so, so and I people had some want to help them. veterans, and Jerry Pensky is yeah. a veteran. He started um, this program. Um, and it's the, the Veterans Business Association, which has nothing to do with VCT. So I'm going to jump mm -hmm. back to VCT. VCT... And then we'll jump back to Jerry. Yes. VCT <laughs> has this crew of very talented guys, uh, yeah. young guys who are coming home with... You know, a lot of them got a substance abuse problem. Yep. Problem. So they sign a contract. They're going to work with VCT for a year, 12 months. However, they also, in that contract, they have to go to... Uh, you know, intensive day treatment program, kind of they have to go to aftercare, um, they have to okay. speak to a mental health counselor, and over that 12-month period, they, they put their life back in a check. Well, in theory. Yeah, in theory. Yeah. And, and then, you know, those that succeed and they graduate, um, you know, VCT helps them find a job after. Okay. Do they help with any, uh, like, uh, moving forward and maybe starting your own business? Yes, to a, to a degree. Okay. Um, your social worker will, will introduce you to, to programs that will buy you tools. If you're service-connected, you know, we'll talk about vocal rehab. Service-connected, by the way, is when a uh, veteran is, is hurt and is being compensated. Service connection equates to the civilian world as workman's comp. You know, you, you get in a truck accident in the Army and you, you, you lose a leg, you become service-connected to a degree for that, that injury. Mm -hmm. And in civilian world, if you drive in a truck and you lose a leg, workman's compensation will pay you, you know, in amount. It's the same Thank thing. Thank you for the clarification. You know, and um, a, a 
veterans don't understand that sometimes, and they'll say, nah, I don't want, I'm not going to file a claim. I'm yeah, not well, there's file. a lot of, you gotta, but, but you got to understand why. Oh. <laughs> because the, the VA doesn't make it easy for our veterans to understand a lot of that stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm proof of it. And that's one of the main reasons why I just had to do what I got to do. Yep. Because navigating through the VA system could be difficult and very intimidating at times. So if we don't have that proper guidance or that person that can meet you and say, this is the step one, step two, believe it or not, a lot of guys opt to leave the VA because of that. Um, so yes, the VA has a lot of stuff there, and I think you had a l better luck with the VA than I have had in the past, unfortunately. I don't know and about that. But I do remember the gentleman's name. David Dorenzo uh, runs the Veterans Construction yeah. Team out of Bedford VA. Um, I fought with the VA for 30 years, you know. Well, yeah, well, I think that's um, why you became a subject matter expert in it, because you fought about it so long. But let's hold on to that, that because I do want to get um, into that in the next segment. So once you came back from the military, you decided to become a driver. As a driver, you decided to drop that and do what after that? What, what was your next um, mission? One of the things I did was I, I realized I couldn't work for people. Uh, uh, I, so. I, I, I started I my own business. Yeah. What'd you do? Uh, well, I owned my own truck. We talked about that. Okay. Um, I was actually able to, to own three trucks at one time and have guys work for me. Sub that. Nice. And uh, th then my my shoulder failed me, and I had to have that replaced. Okay. Um, was that when you stopped driving then? At that? Well, yeah. The DOT pulled my my DOT <sighs> card. No kidding. So um, I ended up selling those trucks, and. Uh, I invested in a company called Pedestal Cleaning and Restoration, where uh, I, I worked in uh, North Andover, right here in North Andover, I had the company. And I, I had a, a truck mounted uh, carpet cleaner. Nice. Uh, okay. $45,000 truck on finance, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, right. But at one point I had seven trucks and 23 people working for me. Nice. We would uh, recondition uh, or, or Office renovate and, yep. uh, kitchens, bathrooms. Uh, we would finish basements over. We would nice. you know, do water damage. Yeah, water um, restoration is a big business. Yeah. Um, so we did that, <coughs> or I did that up until 1999. How, how many years were you in that trade? Oh, probably somewhere around nine. I had a contract with the town of North Andover. No kidding. Um, yeah, I, I had several contracts that we were doing very well. But I woke up in December of 1999 uh, not realizing that I had lost the use of my legs. And when I tried to get out of bed, I couldn't. Um, no I kidding. Yeah, I, I was paralyzed from the legs down. Um, I called my brother. I was a single dad at the time. Uh, my children were, were with me, and they were young children. Uh, so I called my brother. Um, my, my current wife, Cheryl, came to the house and took care of my, my children. Now, my, she's, my oldest. She's, she's uh, an amazing woman, by the way. Cheryl um, has a contagious energy and spirit about her that it does. when you're around her and it, it, it is a good saying is that the energy you surround yourself with is the energy you're going to become right when i'm surrounded by cheryl i'm like giddy and happy and like yep, always laughing cool. right because that's that's what she is so hello cheryl anyway yeah. and thank you for that great spread on easter um day <laughs> yeah at the time though you know my my oldest was like uh nine and he's now 28. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, was that um, a little traumatizing for him? Uh, no, actually, she kept... She kept uh, she, him at bay a little Cheryl bit. Cheryl understood that I was in pain. There was something wrong with me. My brother got me out of there. Um, because I, I didn't have any kind of health insurance at the time, I refused an ambulance. So, my brother came over with his van, rolled me into the back of his van, and took me to see Dr. Caraba uh, right here in, he was on uh, 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 LGH or, be, or veteran. Um, no, he was a civilian doctor. Okay. Uh, he he came down to the van because um, I couldn't get out. And Dr. Crab was a great doctor. I don't know where he is now, but doctor, if you you hear this, I still thank you for what you did. <laughs> yeah. um, but he, he wrote directions for us to go immediately to Leahy Clinic where they took um, X-rays and an M MRI. Long story short, I was on the operating table the next day. Wow. Um, at Leahy in Burlington. Good and, hospital. Uh, yeah. Though. Yeah, I walked Good that hospital. night. No kidding. Yeah, the night of surgery. So what was the issue that, that kept you, if you don't mind um, me asking, if it's not too L3, much? L3, 4, and 5. That was the first time that was operated on. Um, but what caused the actual paralysis? Oh, was the helicopter crash. The, the, the crushing. 
after all, all those these years? years oh yeah yeah the uh, wow the the disc just they just fell apart um, and that's why it's so amazing you know why people keep talking about uh, more usually when they and, and I've had questions like this posed to me from parents uh, like uh, you know, my son was okay uh, four years ago when he got back from Iraq, and now he's bouncing up the walls and doing drugs. And, do and what I help tell people is that some of the injuries that we sustain, not just physically, but mentally, don't surface right away. Yeah. And so people need to really be um, and cognitive And what's more important yeah. uh, to uh, understand is when you're writing a claim, how to write that. that that's that my the next segment. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be quiet again. Uh, this, this is about you. This oh. is about Jerry. This segment is about Jerry. Um, Next segment is I want to cover, uh, you know, the the, the, v, the VSO spot, your claims, and how to make it a lot about easier okay. for veterans to come in. But today, um, I wanted to talk to Jerry, Jerry the man, because Jerry, uh, you know, and I'm not just saying it because you're in front of me here now, but you know I have a lot of respect and admiration for you, do. And I think I've gravitated more towards you because you're uh, and you're a guy that if you're faced with an issue or or someone brings up uh, an issue to you you automatically try to execute and, and make that person right again mm -hmm. and so it's no procrastinating with you and I think that's why I love working with you um, and I, I feel I, the same I, way about you you know that yeah I mean. and I do and, and, and thank you and yeah. I thank you very much but that's why I think that having you here today normal people know is that I don't work by myself I don't do the stuff I do by myself it takes a, a huge collaborative team effort to get some time the things done that we do right. get done and so Jerry uh, office and is also his past experience with uh, being um, the VFW uh, veteran service office um, you know he he brings a, a wealth of knowledge that makes I think our process uh, that much easier to go through. So I do thank you. I do thank you, and I, I, I I'm glad that I, that we, you and I have crossed paths because I think we're going to be doing great things for oh, many yeah, years I think to so. come. So Jerry, after that happened, uh, you came home. You found out you walked in that day, and you walked that night. Excuse yeah. me. And then, um, uh, well, so I, what was your challenges then after that? Uh, well, I had to stay in the hospital for a little while. What's um, a little while? A couple weeks. Oh, it's not bad. Well, it, 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 you're right. It's not bad. A couple it's, weeks? Yeah. You got some good food to lay here. Yeah, but I had a business to run. Yeah, true. And I had hired some knuckleheads. Um, yeah, you know, it's a, we had cleaning contracts, and without me there, they would go, walk in the front door, out the back door, and call it a done deal. Yeah. And during my recovery, I lost a lot of the, the, the contracts, and the business ended up folding. Yep. And it happens, so, yeah. you know. When you're when you're away, no one's gonna run your business the way you run it. Right. I don't care how many people you hire. So it was uh, it was after the the fall of pedestal that uh, I began to work at Bedford VA. And I started out, like I said, CWT VCT, and I worked for VCT a couple of years. Now remember, I said that you sign a contract that in the first year. You, if you graduate, you have to abide you, by there. And you said, role. well, does that happen to everybody? And I said, no, but it didn't happen to me either. Um, I, I worked for VCT for about three years before I was uh, solid enough to, to try to go out in, into the uh, civilian populace again and uh, could not for the life of me get a civilian job. Yeah. Um, you know, I it just couldn't. So I ended yeah. up back at, uh, um, well, I ended up homeless again. Uh, I spent, you know, th there were three times in my life I was a homeless veteran f since 1983. Um, in fact, my predecessor, Ed Mitchell, who was the veteran service officer who sat in the no, office where I sit now, um, helped me. He, he was there 15 years. I was one of the first veterans that uh, he had as a client. Really? Yeah, I lived here in North Andover. Good and, to go. You know, uh, so, so that, I've known Ed for a long time. That played a big help, though, yeah. during that time? Oh, yeah. Uh, so um, after VCT, I went to work for uh, uh, Ken Link in the VASH program at uh, Bedford. And, and VASH is the Veterans Administrative Subsidized Housing Program. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, the VA started cutting me up, you know, uh, replacing the joints that were falling apart. So since 1999, my back had been operated on twice now. I got a little rod in there now. Both my knees have been replaced. My right shoulder has been replaced. And they've taken the MRIs so, of the left one. 
So if you say the bionic man, I will knock you I was, I was. <laughs> but I think you were reading my mind, so I'm uh, gonna leave it alone. So, um, yeah, I worked for, uh, well, I went to school during the recoveries, you know, because it took years, actually, to recover. The VA won't operate on both your knees. Yeah. Um, so one knee was operated on, I would recover from that, you know, and knees are tough. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm so sure. I would, I had, there, there are about 18 months in between my new knees. Uh, so I, I, rather than sit on the couch and die, I, I went back to school. And, uh, Good for you. I have a, an associate's in education and I have a bachelor's in, uh, Good for uh, you. It, it's a dual degree in psychology and sociology. And I became a... Uh, no wonder you mess with my head so much. Uh, a certified Good substance you, abuse buddy. counselor. Good for you. Good for you. I'm, yeah. happy, I'm happy that it turned out that way for you. Because it doesn't turn out, you know, there's a lot of guys it takes a little longer to get there, but eventually they get there. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. if you can get there, no matter how long it takes for you to get there and find solace within yourself and find something that you're... Uh, content and happy to do even if it's not dealing with the the general public but find yeah. something that's going to keep you occupied in your mind occupied listen we don't have much time on this segment real quick but i just wanted to go ahead and talk about jerry mcguire not just jerry mcguire the vso not jerry mcguire the vfw veteran service officer i just wanted to get you guys to know jerry uh, because honestly, I think if you ever need his services and you guys frankly pick up the phone, give him a call, there's not a doubt in any of my bones that he will not help you no matter where you come from. He has no borders, he has no boundaries. If you're a veteran in California, you're a veteran in Vermont, you call this man, he's gonna help you. Jerry, thank you very much for joining me in this segment. My brother, um, stick around, we got another segment, so I'll see you in the second segment, all right? All right. With that said, um, like I always say after leaving each segment, go out there and try to make a difference in someone's life today.